English Across the Pond. Hello, 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 and welcome to English Across the Pond. And if you've seen our new website, you will have read We Are More Than Just This Podcast. Oh, yes, we have updated our website. If you haven't checked that out, head over to our website now, www.englishacrossthepond.com to learn a little bit more about us and what we're doing. You'll notice our podcast looks a little bit more grown up. We added some updates that we are really proud of and it honors today's episode, our title. But before we get into today's episode, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Jennifer. I am your American teacher, American English speaker, and your co-host of this language learning podcast. Hi, hello, how are ya? That must mean that I'm the British half of English Across the Pond. Hello, everybody out there. Thank you for listening. My name is Dan. Hi. Hi. So you might be wondering if you're new who this podcast is for. This podcast is for you, an English learner. Doesn't matter where you are on your journey. We have the resources and information you need. Whether you are an expat looking to live or already living in an English speaking country. If you're a student, if you're a professional, if you want to travel more comfortably in English or just be more comfortable in everyday English life, This podcast will give you natural expressions, vocabulary, and you'll hear how two native speakers have a conversation. You'll learn American and British English vocabulary differences, pronunciation differences, and there are also some cultural differences that you'll hear throughout all of our episodes. So we are so happy to have you here. Today we're talking about adulting. Dan, have you ever heard that word, adulting? Yeah, I've heard of it. Um, And I checked. uh, I did my research, my homework. uh, So I do know what it means. Nice. I think. If if our (laughs) students looked it up in a dictionary, do you think they'd find it in a dictionary? The verb to adult? No, because I think it's... Well, it depends how up to date. Not if it was a paper dictionary. Maybe if they were online, they might find it. Yes, I just looked at my favorite dictionary, Learner's Dictionary, by Merriam-Webster. It is not in there. Oh. Shall I give a definition, or would you like to share a definition of what adulting means? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, clap your hands, and stamp your feet. Here comes Jennifer! Oh, da 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 So as some of you may know, English absolutely loves to take nouns, a person, a place, or a thing, and turn them into a verb. So basically, an adult is a person, a a grown-up, the opposite of a child. Adulting, or to adult, is a verb. And it basically means like to behave like an adult, or to do or engage in activities that are kind of associated with adults or like to make someone act like an adult. Mm. Is that what you were going to say, Dan? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) No, I would have said um, it's the idea of being kind of like grown up. And how do you say that word? Adult. Adult. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. We're going to get into that. (laughs) Sherlock Holmes over there. I know. Before we dive into that, because I just, I need to, um, I did a little research as well. And the American Dialect Society is is some kind of organization. I don't know the details about them, but they kind of created a word of the year. They like invented this category and the verb adult was like 2017 or something's, um, most creative construction. They like won an award for the most creative construction. Or wow. Something. Yeah. 
So it's kind of, it's relatively new, I would say, in the last like five years. But talk to me a little bit about what it means to be an adult. <laughs> You're asking me. I know. <laughs> well, I figure you're you're the wiser of us too, right? Well, first of all, um, I I don't think this is a word, but if adulting, adulting is spending your time acting like an adult, I think I'm more accustomed to childing. To be fair, but having said that, mm. I do know what I do know what an adult should do. Walk in a calm manner, uh, walk upright, and speak clearly. Excuse me, madam, I would like a loaf of bread, please. Something like that. That's what you do as an adult. Or, or, excuse me, please, where is the bread? Pardon me, do you have any (laughs) grey poupon? (laughs) I'm quite adult. Do you think that's quite adult of me, is it? Hold on. Excuse me, please, I'd like some new shoes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, do you guys have that advertisement, that commercial, um, the Grey Poupon commercial? N- never heard of it. You don't know what Grey Poupon is? I don't know what you're talking about. Grey Poupon? It's, an, it's a grey, it's a, I think it's like an English mustard and maybe that's why. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Grey Poupon. It is a... Oh, it's it's a Dijon mustard. It was originated in France. Oh. So I don't know why, but the 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 commercial is like always in British English, the accent, and it's like uh. somebody rolling up in a limo and they roll down the window and someone's like, "Pardon me, do you have any grey poupon?" Uh, that's that sounds like I bet they're an adult, aren't I'm they? Losing it. A what? They're an adult. Whoever's saying that, that's very adult. Adult. I know it does sound very. Profesh. Can I say, um, when I was a kid, there was always this advert for French wine called Le Piador. It doesn't really matter, like Ooh. Le Piador. And the, the strap line was Le Francais adore La Piador. So French people love Piador. So as <laughs> when we were kids, we all went to France with the school and went kind of like, hey, you guys, I bet you all drink Piador. And they were like, what's Piador? <laughs> Ah, uh, and you're like, I've been cheated, I've been lied <laughs> yeah. to. But Piador, it's the wine that you guys drink all the time. What do you mean, what is Piador? You, ad- you adore Piador, right? And they were like, we would never drink that. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, yeah. So well, that also, sorry, last thing, I know I always get sidetracked, right. but the last thing is like the beer fosters. Oh, yeah. Do you have that there? Yeah, we it's like yellow water, but yeah, we do have it. Yeah, and that commercial always says, Foster's, it's Australian for beer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so then it's like, when we went, when I moved to Australia, I was like, oh, Foster's, and they were like, no, yeah, no, we don't, that's not. Yeah, us. yeah. That's like that. companies tricking everybody around the world because they just assume that we're not going to travel. Those days are over, La Pia Dor and Foster's. Be careful. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, so before I kind of took us on a different, uh, I, I sidetracked us there. W- were you going to ask a question? No, I was going to say that, I'm oh, sorry, I was going to say that really adulting is being responsible, um, yeah. paying bills and, for example, um, saving a little money for a rainy day, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can guess, but I think like planning ahead is very adult and seeing both sides of the story. You know, you say to that little person, have you thought how that make how that might make them feel, Jennifer? Hmm? Have you walked? Have you thought about walking a mile in their shoes? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. So do you? Yeah, I would say bills. You know, there's a lot of funny memes on the Internet like. Oh, I just don't want to adult today. Yeah, there are. You know, like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to have a job. I don't want to be responsible for, like, paying for stuff. Long gone are the days where we could mooch off of our parents Ooh. and sit on the couch playing video games. The verb to mooch. Nice one. Well done. Oh, mooch. Yeah. I like that word. To mooch. Um, so do you talk to your daughter about adulting? She's a teenager now. Screenager. 
Ooh. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Look out. That's going to be the new word. That's going to be the new invented word of the year. A screenager. Um, no, not particularly, Jennifer, because she's more mature than I've ever been. Um, she puts the M into mature. So I've never really had to. But of course, I think I do in a way because like subliminally, when I give her my point of view, you know, or we're discussing something and I do actually say, yeah, but it's not all one way. I mean, there are, there is another way of looking at it. So yes, I do. But like, I don't kind of like, sit down, child, it's father time. <laughs> a father, daughter, heart to heart. Yeah, it's more likely I'm trying to do a headstand and fall over and hurt my neck and she has to get the sort of bandages. That's the sort of relationship we have. I'm an idiot and spend most of my time completely hideously embarrassing her by singing really loud, I mean really loud in the street and she absolutely hates it. <laughs> oh, I, we love singing. Come on, Amy. Yeah. But I mean, it's so loud. I mean, so I mean, it, and then I say, "Come on, let's skip!" Right in the middle of the high street, and just start skipping and shaking her, waving her arm around, you know, as we skip. Yeah. Uh, I don't know a if fun there's. Fun dad. Is there a word for that? <laughs> a fun dad. I th well, I think my daughter's got a different word for it. <laughs> maybe, maybe what those teenagers use amongst their friends is different, but yes. we will never know. No, I don't want to know. Um. So, I had a question, and I just lost it. It skipped out of my mind. I can ask, it's gonna be a bit, I can yeah. ask you, though. Do you, adult? I have no choice. I've got bills to pay and mouths to feed. But do you miss, like, do you miss those, you said sort of, like, mooching and, like, couch potato playing video games? Do you miss all of that? You don't, do you? Come on. Hmm. Nah, no, I don't. I really like being independent. I like independence as well, you know, because when you do live off of somebody else, sometimes there's other things that come along with that. Yeah. You know, like when you are not adulting, right? When you're not paying bills and when you're living with parents, like you have to follow your parents' rules when you're younger. Yeah. And every family dynamic is different, of course, but... um. And I, I started working at a pretty young age because I wanted to have my own money to do my own things and not have to worry about asking or my parents saying no or, you know, I wanted to be free to free to do what I want <laughs> any old time. <laughs> nice. And uh, so you became a sandwich artist. That's when I became a sandwich artist. Yes. As our longtime listeners will know. Mm. Mm, I wish we could reference like, oh, that's episode bum bum bum. Bruno will know because he's listened to all the episodes. But yeah, if you were the kind of person who had that kind of memory, like is it like idiot savant? You know, like that kind of photographic. You, you would also have other problems in your life. Is that a politically correct term to use in 2021, Dan? Yep. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I personally don't know, but you're right. There could be other things associated with that. But but um, um, I had a student once who had a memory like that. It was I tell you what, and we used to do class quizzes. He ruined the class quizzes because almost he couldn't help himself, and he just absolutely knew every. It was like what page was the word forget on in the story that we read nine months ago, and he'd just go twenty nine. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. And he did have other problems, though, but he's a um, lovely boy. Yeah, lovely. Um, I remembered my question. It was kind of a little bit about British and American English cultural differences. Of course, this is going to vary family to family and different, you know, even within the U.S., even within American culture. But if you think about, like, movies or kind of like a general concept of adulthood in the U.S. is like at 18 years old boom, get out, get live on your own, you know? Not that parents kick you out of the house, mm. but, you know, um, there is this idea that you kind of go out on your own at 18. Yeah. 
Is that the same in your neck of the woods? Yeah, I thought it might be more 21 with you guys. But yeah, no, it's definitely 18 here. And um, yeah, you start to fend for yourself at sort of 18. But, you know, they are ch- things, things are changing a little bit. It's not unusual to have kids hanging around the nest, 19, 20, 21, 22, maybe post-university. So your kids leave to go to uni but they're back at the weekends and stuff and maybe in the summer holes they come back easter uh christmas but slowly but surely they are cutting the apron strings oh i never heard that expression before yeah cutting the apron strings. because i just had coffee uh, yeah Sorry. yeah you would think that it would be 21 here in the u.s because of the Draco- age, the draconian. drinking age, yeah. you know, but no, it's 18. 18, you are out on the streets. When did you start adulting, <sighs> paying your own bills and living on your own? Don't ask. 17 or something? Wow, what a mature young lad. Yeah, it was forced upon me, Jennifer. I wasn't particularly a choice I had to make, but like I was living on my own at seventeen. I had my own apartment and stuff. Uh, fam- family was a w- family was a wee bit messy, a wee yeah. bit messy. Scottish, a r- very good Scottish accent. I've been practicing. The only thing is to do my Scottish really well. I have to really shout, so I can only do it in the car. <laughs> Back in the lock with you, Nessie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I was adulting uh, at like actually I mean you know by the time I got my accommodation I'd already been adulting because I needed somewhere to live so I mean it swings and roundabouts says pluses and minuses but I was adulting at like sort of like 15 mm. <laughs> so knowing that about you obviously the family situation uh, for you and like what you're creating for your daughter is much different are you kind of more are you thinking like no amy stay here as long as you want no you don't have to pay for your cell phone bill no you don't have to do this like are you gonna kind of shelter her or shield her are you gonna encourage her to go off on her own well um i'm gonna encourage her to make her own decisions and there'll always there'll always be a place for her here jenna (laughs) you'll always have a your room will always be open yeah except when it's rented out <laughs> no yeah. um yeah i don't know she is 13 oh nearly 14 getting towards 14 wow. but i haven't really thought about it too much yet but i would hope that like it's that sort of thing where i would hope that she'd start to flap her own wings you know i don't need to kick her out of the nest you know yeah no no need to kick her out of the nest no um Last kind of questions outside of the things that we've talked about with paying bills and living on your own and getting a job. Mm. What are other things that adults have to like worry about or think about that maybe kids do not? Well, the futile, um, con- futile reasons for existing. Pondering. <laughs> existential, life yeah, existential crisis. Also. Um, Oh, what's love got to do with it? Uh, relationships. Oh, love. Yeah. I mean, you can love things when you ki- when you're a kid, like footballs and ice creams, but it gets more complicated when it's another human. Yeah. Like when they go, like you're so selfish. You're like, huh, you're so selfish. You know. Yeah. That sort of thing. What about what what about status? Do kids have to worry about status? Well, they probably do nowadays, yeah. Uh, whether they're Instagrammable or not, um, I mean, they shouldn't have to. But yeah, I mean, you do have to think about like your place and where you fit in society and what. I guess, but not everybody does. Not everybody thinks I'm going to be this kind of person. Some people just like be, you know. And but then they have a breakdown when they're forty. Sorry. A midlife <laughs> crisis. Yeah. Who am I? I'm going to buy myself a guitar. Uh, are we? Is that a? Are you hinting to something? No, I've always had guitars. My, I'm not oh, yeah. having a midlife crisis because I'm just limping from one crisis to another. Life is a continual crisis. <laughs> oh no! No, in a nice way. I have nice crises. Yeah. Crises. Well, crises. Yeah, we. There is all life is all about suffering. Yeah, and there like, you go. I'm looking into, I'm looking into Buddhism. Buddhism, yeah. 
and uh, I'm I'm kind of going into the the noble truths. Oh, that could be maybe another another episode in the future. Are there but... are there nine? Nine noble truths. I mean, I I I'm taking a course right now, and we've only touched on four of the noble truths, so I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me. No, I won't. Don't worry. I'm just I just want to see if I'm right, because then I'll be happy. Noble truths. Oh, there's four. Yes. Damn. <laughs> Whose status is high? <laughs> America won, England nil. Yeah. Or I should say, America won, England zip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, um, that's what you guys say. Yes. Well, thanks for talking about being an adult with me today, Dan. I'm going to go off and do some cartwheels. <laughs> and go off and be a kid? Yeah. Yeah. We are going to bring this conversation to Telegram, whoop, whoop. where nobody has to worry about being an adult. No. And we can have fun, spread cheer, practice English, and keep on talking. So let's talk about adulting to you. What does adulting mean to you? What kind of adult activities do you do? And stick around for a very exciting brand new language focus where Dan and I are going to talk a little bit about pronunciation. Like, Dan, how do you say the word S-T-A-T-U-S? Status. Ah. Status. We'll get into that. Thanks for listening, everybody. Love you lots like jelly tots. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hello. Welcome to this week's Language Focus. We are doing things a little bit differently because we have some different things here at English Across the Pond. As we've mentioned, we have new membership. We have premium membership for this podcast, which gives our members extra lessons, English classes, in practice in a private telegram group. So this language focus is giving a teaser, a little bit of extra pronunciation practice for you, focusing on American and British English differences. You can learn American and British English on this podcast and in this language focus and the lesson this month, we're going to share some differences that both dialects have on syllable stress. So our focus today is on syllable stress differences in American and British English. The episode title today was adulting. You heard several times in this episode the word adult. You heard it in American English, adult, and you heard it in British English, adult. (laughs) But you are going to hear from Dan in a minute. So the main difference here with the word adult in American English is the first A has the schwa a sound. Adult. Adult. And that's because the emphasis, the stress, is on the D-U-L-T, the second syllable. Adult. So that is where my intonation rises, my pitch rises up to show stress on that syllable. Adult. Because the first A is non-stressed, it takes the schwa sound, the unstressed syllable sound. Adult. 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 So listen to this, listen to this American pronunciation. Pause the audio, practice repeating adult. 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 And then continue on with the pronunciation lesson from Dan. Dan, take it over. Thank you, Jennifer, and your beautiful explanation of some crazy American pronunciation. As Jennifer pointed out, the topic this week is adulting. And you can probably hear already that the syllable stress is different in British English. A syllable, in case you're wondering, is an individual sound. So, the country Greece 
and the country France has one syllable, one sound. The country Poland, Brazil, Sweden, Japan, de de Japan, they have two syllables. And Germany and Italy and mm, can you think of one? <laughs> Canada have three syllables. Australia, Australia, good eye, mate. Australia has four syllables. So a syllable is an individual sound, and the word adult has two syllables. A is one and dult is the other. Adult. And as you can hear, in British English we say adult. Whereas, of course, in American English, Jennifer says adult. Crazy. We will be practicing this more in our membership will be looking at more words that have different syllable stress between British and American English. So, if you're a member, we'll see you on the inside. If you're not a member, why not? <laughs> Join us, sign up, go to our website, englishacrossthepond.com slash community, click around, have a look at our new website, and... Until the next time, until the next time.